Hi there, and thank you for tuning in. In this video, I want to show you how to shoot in manual exposure mode on the Canon EOS 5D Mark III. I think what I'm about to show you is applicable to many Canon cameras and certainly Mark I and II of the 5D. So uh, let's get cracking. I'm not sure you're aware of this, but your camera has a built-in light meter. And what that does is it simply reads the available light and you can see the red needle here moving as I uh, put the dome, the dome here at the top in shadow and in light respectively. You can see it's changing. And that light meter is working constantly in your camera. And normally the camera uses the light reading to figure out some camera settings that will work and give a correct exposure. When you shoot in manual mode, the first thing that happens is that the light meter, it doesn't stop working, but it's no longer applied for any use. You are in full control. You control all the parameters that determine the exposure. So this is actually no longer in use. But the good news is it will still tell you the readings here. So it will tell you what your combination of selected uh, parameters will give in terms of exposure, whether it's over or underexposed. I will show you that in a little while. You've probably heard of the exposure triangle. In the digital world, the exposure triangle is not so much a triangle, rather it's only consists of the shutter speed and the aperture. The shutter speed you can think of as a curtain that goes up and exposes the sensor. The aperture is the iris of the lens, so the more you close it down, the less light it will let in, the more you open it up, the opposite. But the price you pay is that the depth of field will be very shallow when you shoot wide open. So there was always uh, some reasons for having different versions of the aperture. But these are the two that control how much light will hit the sensor. The ISO is actually a camera internal post-processing thing. So once it has read the available light via the sensor, the camera will apply ISO, which is a sort of a gain or factor. Just like in the old days when you had a radio, you could turn up the volume, but if the signal was bad, both the signal and the noise would be amplified. It's a little bit the same with ISO. If you have a camera that can go to crazy high ISO numbers, it just means it's very good at multiplying with a very large number. That's all it really means. So be careful with going too crazy with the ISO. You will have grainy and uh, images with wash, washed out colors. So be a little bit careful with that one, but it can be used to compensate for, for lack of light but actually it has nothing to do with the exposure as such. But we just use these three in combination as because they sort of determine how the, the final image will look like in terms of uh, exposure. Other than turning the camera on, the thing to do here is to move the mode dial here to M for manual. And you can see that you need to push the center button here in order to move the dial. You have here aperture priority mode, you have shutter priority, you have program mode, but you need to go to manual here. And uh, once you're in manual, well, of course you can see there is a little white dot here, so you can see the M needs to be next to that one. Then you're in manual mode. You can always, you can also go to the menu here, and you can see now at top left it says M for manual. If I put it in a different mode, then it's aperture priority. And now it's shorter priority. You can see that top left. If you're in doubt which mode you're in, you can always consult the top left reading here. So once in manual mode, you need to control first and foremost the shutter speed. And you can see I simply use the, the dial here on the top of the camera and that controls the shutter speed. The reading is so that this is a fraction, but again, if you wanna see that spelled out, you can go here and, and it also tells you here at the bottom this is the shutter speed. So if you have some camera settings where you're thinking, what, what's that all about? 100, 2.8, 100 here, what is that about? You can go to the quick menu and you can see it will tell you the 100th is the shutter speed, the aperture, that's 2.8, and the ISO speed, that's 100. So that's a good way to get familiar if you're not too used to, to reading the, the top LCD here. These values you can also find in the bottom of the viewfinder, but it's a little bit difficult for me to show you this uh, here in the video. So that was the shutter speed. So that's one down, two to go. Next one is the aperture. And uh, you have the big wheel here on the, on the rear of the camera. 
As you can see here, I can change the aperture here, but I can also change it right here. And you can see the lens will not go faster than 2.8. That is the maximum for this particular lens. And then I can change it to whoa, f32, right? And again, if you're unsure what, what is 32 all about, go to the quick menu here and you can see it tells you it's the aperture because the f32 is boxed in. And that goes for, for all the exposure values. You can just move the cursor around here and get the readings. The final thing to control is the ISO. If I hit this button, you can see the display goes almost empty and bottom left you have the ISO reading. And after a little while, it jumps out of that mode again. But while it is in that mode, you can change the ISO value, as you can see here. Yeah. So that's relatively easy to change. And uh, if you don't want to control the ISO yourself, then you're actually not shooting in ma fully manual mode. I would say you're maybe shooting in a quarter automated. But if you go to the lowest value here on the scale, it may not be a 100 on your camera, but if you go to the lowest value and then you go one to the left, now you can see it says automated. And automated means now the camera will set the ISO so that you get a correct exposure. Meaning that if you, for instance, have closed down the aperture and given a very fast shutter, you will probably see the ISO go very high. So be a little bit careful with that. You can see if I now change the shutter speed so that it is slower you can see now it drops the iso right and that's because it says there's plenty of light so it will always try and keep the iso as low as possible in order to get the cleanest images if you hit the menu button here top left on the back of the camera you get into the the big menu system and the first item up here that is the shooting menu you can see it looks like a little camera and you can walk sideways here in the sub menus so there are four of them uh, but you need to go to the second one so that the second box here turns red. And here on the second item, you see it says ISO speed settings. And if you select that one, you can configure the ISO speed in detail. And the first one is the one that you have already seen. That is here where you select the ISO speed manually. Also, you can choose the auto. So let's go for manual here. The next one is the ISO speed range. That is the range you can choose when you set it manually. So you can actually limit yourself and say, I don't want to be able to choose manually beyond say 3200. And then that is it. If you can't remember what this is about, you can actually just press the information button and it will tell you exactly what this menu item is all about. The one that I find the most interesting here is the auto ISO range, where you can limit the range which it automatically selects and that way you can avoid that it suddenly goes crazy and maybe goes to something like, what do I know, 25,000 or, or something crazy like that. So I normally limit mine to say 6,400. Then I know I will come home with fairly usable images. If I set the ISO back to manual, just do that like this, say 100. You can see that as I do that and I half press the shutter, when I change the values, you can see this little dot moving up and down on the scale here. And that is not exposure compensation. That is actually the camera having an opinion about how I am exposing the image. You remember I talked about the meter earlier in the video. And this is actually what the camera then is telling me. It's based on the reading, the metering that it's doing and the combination of the aperture, shutter speed and ISO that I have selected, the camera is now telling me whether I'm doing well or less well relative to the technically correct exposure. So you can see if I if I increase the shutter time to say in this case 13 seconds, you can see now it thinks that I'm I'm overexposing with three stops. If I drop that to two seconds, then it finds that I have the correct exposure. This of course is <laughs> with an, an aperture of, of 32, which is really closed down. So maybe I want to change that a bit like this. And you can see now the arrow indicates that because I'm going 
even more than three stops of overexposure. It can't outshow it, but it can just tell me that the, the direction I have gone is way beyond three stops overexposure. So if I take down, let's see, if I take down the, the, the shorter time, you can see then it drops to something meaningful. So use that scale. You will also find that in the, in the viewfinder. Many of the things I've talked about here, you can see that is both on the top LCD, the rear LCD, and then in the viewfinder. So once you get used to these values, I think you will quickly spot uh, both the aperture of the shutter speed and the ISO in the viewfinder, uh, as well as uh, on this top LCD. Yep, that's it for me. I hope you found this useful. As always, happy shooting. Take care. Bye-bye.